スタンダップバンガー Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of This Week's Recap, or Twerk, as I'm going to call it affectionately from here on out.、Uh, literally, as I'm recording this, I've just arrived back home from Richmond, BC,、uh, finishing my event over、uh, at Spring Fest over there for this year. And I gotta say, I had a grand old time. The vlog for that trip will be out very soon, and I hope you guys enjoy that when it comes up. But for now, We're going to be looking at the cards that I should have shown you on Sunday, aka yesterday, but because I was away doing vacation stuff, I did not get a chance to put the episode out there and record it. So hopefully, this comes out later、uh, on Monday evening, if not Tuesday morning. We'll see how this goes, how、uh, everything goes. But we are here regardless, and we're going to be talking about the new cards that showed up、uh, last week. And、uh, we had quite a number of cards that showed up, and a lot of news that just Blew everyone's mind, and I'm pretty excited to、uh, share that with everybody. So,、uh, without further ado, let's hop right in. So, the first card that we're going to be looking at here is good old Berserk Dragon. Berserk Dragon has graced us with its presence. He has returned as a 10k grade to 5k shield, and he has the ability here one placed, cost counter boss one, and soul boss one. Choose a One of your opponent's rear guards or retire it. If the suit is on the vanguard circle, you may draw a card. And then has an auto ability on the rear guard circle. When this vanguard,、uh, unit attacks the vanguard, if the number of your rear guards is greater than your opponent, this gets plus 3k till the end of the turn. So this thing would be able to swing all those, at all those pesky 13k vanguards. And not only that, his skill has been fixed to a c a r a b o s s one, soul boss one, which is great. Looking at how Kagero、uh, so far has been looking, it seems like they're going to be helping out. Build their soul,、uh, which is you know great, and、uh, looks like Bas-、uh, Berserk Dragon is also going to be a very good unit to ride into, being that he allows you to essentially replace the cost、uh, of call- riding him. So that's very good.、Uh, Berserk Dragon is definitely going to be、uh, played in both premium and in standard.、Uh, a lot of folks are really excited to see Berserk Dragon return, and、um, yeah,、uh, not only that,、uh, it's just overall just a good card, a 10k body. Has a、uh, inherent ability to draw a card when placed in the Vanguard Circle for the cost and your retire unit, and it always swings at an oppo-、uh, opponent's Vanguard for 13k as long as your rear guards are greater than your opponent's, aka when you are blazing. So that's very good, that's very great. So I'm、uh, very happy that Berserk Lord is back in the game and you know, just overall, just happy. Happy, happy, happy.、Uh, speaking of cards that return, we do have.、Uh, Embodiment of Armor Bar making a return. He is still the good old 8k van-、uh, grade one. He has a 10k shield and he has a skill, which is, you know, very new.、Uh, on the rear guard circle, when he's placed, you can kind of bust one and soul bust one. Then you choose one of your opponent's grade two or less rear guards in the same column as this unit and retire it. If the number of your rear guards is greater than your opponent's for this turn, he gets 5k, allowing him to swing for 13, so you can touch an opponent's vanguard, which is crazy. Bar is extremely good, and now that Kagero has some pretty good grade ones,、uh, a card that we're going to be discussing later is going to be able to fit into the grade one lineup should Kagero players decide to use it. This is a very good card. Con-、uh, Kagero, excuse me, Bar. Bar is such an amazing, amazing grade one for、uh, Kagero. This is, the,、um, this is one of the first, I believe, grade ones that does not require something to hit in order for you to retire something, at least to my knowledge.、Uh, the fact that it's Kagero plus one, Soul Boss one is also great.、Uh, it's good because, you know,、um, it's a fair, fair balance skill, I believe, and it only targets grade two or less. In the same column, so it's pretty limited to what you can retire, and、uh, plus that 5k bonus is only for the turn, so that's you know a very, very, very good skill. I really like it.、Uh, otherwise, it's just a good card, and it, I think I believe it comes with the trial deck. Yeah,、uh, it comes with the trial deck, so it's pretty interesting to see that we're getting bar right out of the box, and、uh, Yeah, nothing much else to say.、Uh, it's going to be standard, it's going to be premium. I'm pretty sure people in premium are considering playing this. They're going to make certain cuts so that they can use it. And uh, yeah, uh, the next card here we got、uh, let's see here High Dog Breeder Sarian. I believe this is a,、uh, another rework. I、uh, can't remember off the top of my head. It seems familiar. But he has his、uh, auto skill in the Vanguard and the Rear Guard.、Uh, CIP, I believe it's cost if placed during this turn, one of your high beasts in the same 
Columnist's unit uh, gets plus 5,000 power. I believe that's... Uh, I believe it's just uh, if placed. So I don't know why my uh, my source here has that weird lead. But uh, the nice thing about this is that any high beast in the same column as this unit gets plus 5,000 power uh, till the end of the turn. So, you know, very strong. He is a f uh, 10k grade 2. So it's And it's also the Vanguard Circle. So if you do have a high beast in the back row of your Vanguard, for that turn, your Vanguard's going to be pretty powerful. Uh, yeah, all things considered, it's a good card. Uh, it's free, I believe. Uh, there's no cost on the... No, nothing on there, so... Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, these next two cards are promos. So uh, they, they actually have the old... The, the original template for the card art, so you can tell by the shield more specifically. Uh, this one here is called Morning Timer. This is a Nova Grappler unit, if I recall. Let me just double check real quick. It seems like it's Nova Grappler. Anyways, so this unit's ability here, auto rear, uh, rear guard, retire this unit at the start of your battle phase, and we pay the cost. If you do, stand all your rear guards. Now this is a pretty interesting unit. Um, it's a promo, so this is gonna be only in premium, I believe. Uh, it's gonna be interesting, considering that uh, I think the only deck in Nova Grapplers that rests during the battle phase is like, uh, what is it called, Cosmic Lord? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what uh, they were thinking of when they were making this card. I, I, I know for sure I can't think of a reason why. Uh, I don't think uh, Victor needs it, I'm pretty sure. If, I, if I'm wrong about what this unit is, if it's something else, it's not, it's not like Joker 100%, but it might be Dimensional Robo. I'm going to just quickly double check that because uh, Morning Timer, uh, I, I honestly cannot see uh, what its use is in Nova Grappler or... DP, if it is DP, I'm just quickly checking here. It should be Nova Grappler. Yeah, it is Nova Grappler. Okay. So, and this this is a premium only uh, card, as according to the wiki. So, um, yeah. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think this card's use is. I really don't understand why this particular skill is coming out. I only know Cosmic Lords are the units that rest things during your main phase to get certain skills. But I honestly don't know. Uh, so please let me know. Anyways. Uh, this next card here is a Link Joker unit. It's called Imperium Dragon. Uh, has a continuous rearguard ability with generation break 1 during your turn. If your opponent does not have any rearguards, this unit gets plus 10,000 power. So it's pretty nice if you manage to lock your opponent's board completely. Or, uh, it becomes a... Uh, this is a grade 2, so it becomes a 19k grade 2 for GB1. And it's continuous, so if it's on your opponent... Uh, if your opponent decides not to call anything, this also becomes 9K, uh, 19k as a rearguard during their turn. Uh, no, sorry, it's just during your turn, so never mind. But it's an interesting card. Uh, I don't know if Messiah would want it. Uh, it's a pretty lackluster card. It's not a Star Vader, so I guess that is why it's a promo. Uh, honestly, I don't know even know why I'm talking about it, but it's on this list, so I might as well do it. All right, uh, we have another Kagero Grade 1 unit. This one is from the Trial Deck as well. Uh, it's a 6K Grade 1 with 10K power, and its name is Dragonite Burge. I believe this is an older unit. For some reason, this artwork feels familiar. But I really do like this unit. Uh, its ability here is act on the rearguard circle. If the number of your opponent's rearguards is four or more, cost counterboss one, move it to your soul. Choose one of your opponent's rearguards and retire it, and one of your rearguards gets plus 10,000 power till the end of the turn. So uh, I was uh, wrong in making the statement that Bar was one of the... Well, I was right in saying it's one of the first units shown, but now we have another unit that's a grade one that retires. And not only that, it goes into your soul. So it fuels up the soul cost for other units. It also helps out for you cards like Ziegenberg, because you can also uh, give a rear guard uh, plus 10,000 power for the turn, like say in Nahalem that's on the board and it gets plus 20k before it attacks. Unless, of course, you have a force marker on it, so then it becomes a uh, plus 30k, which is a. No, no, am I wrong? But, uh, yeah, 30k uh, with double Ziegenberg attack. So, I really like this card, uh, Burj. Uh, although, now we can start to see that Kagura is going to have a counter blast issue. Uh, their soul issue is kind of mitigated with cards like this. Uh, for sure, uh, Gatling Claw is no longer needed because this unit can also retire any regard. So, your po uh, Forerunners are no longer safe against Kagura. Uh, so, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the moment that you ride into grade one, uh, your starter is in very much danger of being retired. And I really do like this unit because it 
gives one of your opponents uh, uh one of your rearguards plus ten thousand power, and it's a, it's honestly it's just a really good card. <laughs> it's kind of really strong for grade one, um, and it's a trial deck too, so it's very easy to get it. This card could easily have been double rare or triple rare as a grade one, so. I don't know. <laughs> this is just a, overall just a strong card. Plus 10k is pretty incredible for what this thing does. And uh, and you get to choose your opponent's rear guard. It's, this is incre incredible. Oh, of course, the limit here is that your opponent has to have pretty much a full board. but So it can be, you know, dodged. But the thing is, though, is that if you have less rear guards than your opponent when you're facing Kagura, you're your Kagura is going to have a field day and they don't need to worry about having to kill things so to get their power bonuses so and to have blaze and all that but then again it's an act it's pretty much free it, no it's a counter blast uh i keep uh i keep looking at the text and not seeing the purple purple icon for counter blast so it's kind of throwing me off because they did change the icon for counter blasting and soul blasting so um I, again, I do like this card. I feel like people are going to be running it at, at 2. It doesn't seem like it's worthy of a 4 of slot. Uh, but, yeah, we, we gotta... We gotta <laughs> I'm pretty sure people are going to be running this, regardless of what... Uh, anything else. This is just too good to run. Uh, it's too good not to run, I should say. Uh, <laughs> Alright, moving right along, we have some more Royal Paladins. Uh, these ones are actually from the main set. This first one here is a single rare called Funnel Gal. Uh, auto in the rear guard. When this unit attacks and is boosted, the cost is kind of plus one. Soul Charge one, and this unit gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. So that's a very nice beat stick. Um, for a counter blast, though, uh, counter blast, it kind of seems a bit, you know, much. Uh, counter blasting rail paladins is kind of an issue. Uh, it won't, this thing won't see the light of day when it comes to premium, but for sure in standard. Uh, we'll definitely get to see this. I don't know if it's going to be used at all, but it does seem pretty interesting, and it is a single rare, so um, that's all much that's to say about that. Uh, this next one here is another grade one. Uh, it's uh, from the main set of common, AK 10k shield, Knight of Rapid Progress Anil. Continuous in the rearguard circle. During the battle that this unit attacked, why does it say continuous? Why did my source say continuous? Oh, it is continuous. Interesting. Uh, if this unit attacked the Vanguard, this unit gets plus 3,000 power, and it's only during the battle. So, um, I'm pretty sure somewhere in the Japanese text it says until end of turn, unless I'm wrong. So, uh, this thing might just keep stacking power. Uh, I'm pretty sure end of turn should be somewhere in that text, but if I'm wrong about that, then as long as this thing keeps attacking a Vanguard, uh, it's going to get a continuous plus 3k. So, I'm pretty sure that's incorrect of me. It does. It should have until end of turn, or if it's only during the battle that it attacks. So, uh, that's kind of, you know, looking at the wording and misinterpreting it. But, uh, it's a pretty decent card, I guess so. Um, yeah, not much else to say about that. But we'll move on right along to the big, the big thing that dropped on us this week. This is insane. So I'm going to talk about them together because they both have the same skill. We have Flash, Shield, Esalt, and Wyvern Guard, Bari returning, except they are both draw triggers, 5k draw triggers uh, with the Sentinel ability. So yeah, and not only that, it's not uh, they're not just uh, uh, Sentinel abilities, they're original Sentinel abilities, meaning they don't have to worry about where it's coming from, it doesn't have to be from hand. Uh, you could place it from whatever means necessary, and you can guard with it. So uh, it's important to note because in future releases, uh, there's some PGs that like there's some skills that allow you to superior call PGs to the guardian circle. But because certain PGs didn't have the have the clause of it has to be placed from hand, they won't go off. But these draw triggers now as being sentinels, uh, you can call them from anywhere and. It's important to note because other clans like Grand Blue, for example, uh, uh, Gold Paladin, uh, J uh, Pale Moon, anything that can call from Soul, it's just, oh my goodness. Wyvern Guard Bari and Flash Shield Salt make a comeback as draw triggers. Now, this is going to change quite a lot because now, uh, essentially, decks that relied on blocking grid ones or higher don't block PGs anymore. Uh, 
Of course, the only deck that really nullifies Sentinels is Dark Irregulars, because Dark Irregulars have Bale for Repressor, and they have Balam, and they also have uh, Shahara Stride. But for every other deck that prevents Guarding of Grade 1s, this, this thing gets right past it. Um, it really depends on how premium evolves to the point where... Uh, <clears throat> if we want to play with the draw trigger PGs. But in standard, of course, I think people are going to move directly to having draw triggers as their four PGs because some of the grade ones in like in standard are just so good. Like, for example, we have Marin, we have Allen, uh, we have uh, Pongo. Like, there's just so many good grade ones. And in pre it also frees up the grade one lineup because we do have to play Strive Fodders, we do have to play Perfect Guards, and now we don't have to play grade one Perfect Guards. So that's, of course, it all depends on how the meta shifts in the premium, but in standard, I can totally see most decks wanting to run the four draw triggers as a... Uh, as their Sentinel, because it's going to, A, first of all, it's going to be a slower meta. Uh, we're not going to be drawing as much. Of course, power is going to be crazy high, but having, so playing draws is good. And now drawing a draw trigger is never, like, it's never a minus now. It's never a bad thing to see. Like, of course, the worst thing is if you damage check or draw trigger, but damage check and draw triggers have always been the best thing to do because you get to draw a card off the skill. And now with all the triggers giving plus 10,000 power as a bonus, uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't speak. Sure, you, it's it's losing your this draw trigger to, like, is a lot better than losing a vanilla perfect guard grade one because if the perfect guard grade one goes to the damage zone nothing really happens you just mess lose out on a pg you just, you know you just become sol whereas this you get to actually draw a card and give your field or your uh, a unit 10k power so this this these draw triggers are insanely crazy and it's just going to change a lot of how we think about vanguard in terms of just guarding and deck building it's going to be interesting um yeah, I, I'm really happy. Uh, <laughs> I'm really happy that these things are here. It's going to make the game so much more interesting. And uh, these all are also double rare. Uh, I should point that out. So these are definitely going to be money cards in this set. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. And a lot of people are really, really excited for these draw triggers to come out. So that's all the news for the cards. Now, the important thing here that we should probably discuss is that it's confirmed in English that Barkle, TikTok Worker, and uh, Seven Seas Apprentice Night Runner are both available as first vanguards, uh, both Japanese and English. And uh, Odysseus is now unlimited from the list, so Ripples are back to full power. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see all those cards come back. Another thing is that um, come... Uh, the release of the next few sets. Lower L is going to be limited to one, and uh, Purple Chip Pieces cannot be played in decks with uh, Jumping Jill. And they did actually uh, announce Jumping Jill's skill, I just can't find it in my notes here, but I do recall what it does. So essentially, it's when it's placed, the cost is to send a unit from your uh, field to the soul, and then you get to superior call a unit. So it's a basically... Um, it's basically Purple Trapezes in the form of a Grade 2. But the thing is, is that if you have both of these units, you can just loop them forever. And uh, they decided you cannot play these two in the same deck just to stop loops because there are units, for example, uh, Silver Beast Tamer Lickier, the original one, would get infinite power on the Vanguard Circle. And then if you are playing, like, say, the Legion, uh, that Tiger is also going to get something. There's also that uh, Clown that gets plus 2k to itself and the Vanguard every time a unit's called out. And they just want to avoid an infinite loop for Pale Moon. Plus, Pale Moon got really good recently, so it would really suck if Pale Moon got an infinite loop with Harry. So it's a good call on Bashiro for that, but then it, it's... It's one of the things, you want to have a grade 2 purple trapezes, or do you want to have a grade 1 purple trapezes? It's up to you how you decide what you want to do. Another thing to note is that they confirmed that uh, ta that uh, Angel Feather with Protect, uh, I believe we've known that for a while now, but the, because Angel Feather is Protect, certain cards have been put on the watch list. We have Gavril Prim, we have this Celestial Limit Break unit that I can't remember the name of, uh, we have this promo that puts a card from hand to damage that a card from hand. We have Zabanya, and we have uh, Nokiel uh, as cards on the watch list. So 
The reason why is because you can potentially heal three cards with uh, all those skills happening. And, um, yeah, it's just good to know uh, that Bushiroda is considering everything. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I need to say about that. Um, there's really not much else to say. Uh, I have to find that uh, the English version of this text, so I'm just... I'm just saying notes myself. I don't, I don't know why you need to know. I'm going to fix that in post. But anyways, that's pretty much all the news, guys. I, I'm i pretty excited for all the new stuff to come. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can't we just go quickly over to June? Um, April is almost over. So I think next week or the week after? No, the week after is finally when we can get to see Vanguard again. So we have one more dry spell before we can get back into the having an episode of Vanguard every Saturday and looking forward to what's to come the next week. And, uh, yeah, this has been this week's recap. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, discuss with me down below. I really want to know what that, um, that Nova Grappler unit wants to do. I really have no idea. So if you guys can help me out with that. And until then, I got to say everyone, thank you for being here. And, uh, until next time I got to say, bye bye.